I'm Capriana, and I'm an interviewer here at WMAP Radio. You can tune in weekdays from 2 to 5 to catch me and some of the incredible guests that join us on our show, from doctors to authors, life coaches, actors to entrepreneurs. You can hear their stories here every day. Tune into our Long Island station, 103.9 FM weeknights from 7 to 8 in Orlando, Florida, 94.1 The Bud, and 24-7 at WMAPradio.com, where we bring you the world's most amazing people. Make us part of your day. All right, what's going on, WMAP Radio? It's Capriana. So I have a really great guest ahead. She's come on our show a number of times. She always has incredible things to say. Her name is Dr. Faye Obamahinti. She is a wife, mother, ordained minister, speaker, and author. She's also part of our Simply Amazing Women book series. So Dr. Faye, how are you? I am doing very well. Thank you, Capriana, for having me. I am excited for our time today. I am always so excited whenever we get you on our station. So give us a background about who you are for, you know, any of my listeners that haven't heard your story before. Okay, thank you. My name is Faye Obamainti, and I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, my, both of my parents are Nigerians, and they were here to go to school um, when they had me. Um, and after they had me, things did not work out between both of them. So, um, and here I was, their child. And so I was sent to live with my um, grandparents, because those are the ones that raised me, my paternal grandparents, mm-hmm. at the age of six months. Wow. Um, growing up with them, um, my basic focus at that time was I was their seventh child. And uh, I had the privilege of having the stability and the love of two amazing and wonderful people that God will bless me with. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was an African Methodist minister as well as alternative medicine um, doctor. And my grandmother was a retired principal. So they poured a lot into me. And I know it was God's way of just showing me um, his goodness and his kindness. And um, during my 15th birthday, I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ at a youth camp where I gave my heart and my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the foundation that I needed because God knew what was going to happen and unravel in my life. And almost at 16 years old, I got the um, word that my biological mother wanted to meet me. And so we met for the first time with the intention, the excitement of a teenager, with the excitement to get to know her. Um, That did not go very well um, because for the brief moment that we lived together was where I encountered one of the traumatic um, situations of my life. Um, The scar that I wear on my forehead, it's a reminder of that. And we met each other three times after that um, at her um, mother's place. Um, and great-grandmother's place, they all lived together. So when I visited them, she um, had a chance to see me. And one of those visits was another traumatic time as well, um, with a gun to my head. So, But there's this thing that has settled me um, at this point in my life. Um, there's definitely something between my father and my mother that has caused this um, huge conflict between two families, and I happen to be, you know, the one in the midst of it. I'm 51 years old, and I cannot just imagine with the life God has blessed me with today, a loving, godly husband and loving, godly daughters, ages 28, 26, and 24. It amazes me, and that takes me to prayer for both sides of the family. Mm-hmm. So that is my story um, in a nutshell, and I had the um, opportunity to chronicle my life story based on the leading and the voice of God to chronicle my life story in a book that was released um, earlier this year, um, Crush to Restore Principles of Restoration from the Book of Nehemiah. And that book basically used the backdrop of the Book of Nehemiah from the Bible because of the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem, and God was able to speak directly directly and put the pieces of my life back together again. So the book chronicles that I share stories um, that were relevant to each of the 13 chapters of the book of Nehemiah of how God did exactly that in my life, Mm -hmm. putting all the pieces of my life back together, um, giving me that um, freedom 
that I needed so much because of the torment that was carried in my soul for a long time. I carried on process trauma for a long time into adulthood and getting me to the place of healing and now to the place of wholeness. I am really grateful to God. Only he could have done that. Of course, I mean, you basically just summed up everything that we've ever spoken about, you know, the last couple of times that we had an interview. I mean, so you grew up in Nigeria. Um, it, you ended up meeting your birth mother um, at age 16. You said you had a traumatic experience. Uh, you ended up going to this camp that ended up changing your outlook and kind of changing your, your faith. And it gave you this light that you found in God. And it completely just rewired your brain and made you you know, want to do something incredible with your life. And I know that you do a Christian TV show that you co-host with your husband all because of that. Yes. And, um, you know, our experiences either makes us better or they make us better. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice to do that. And I believe that having, having that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and having people around me that poured into me at those critical moments, allowed me and sustained me, even till the point that I did not know I was carrying such um, pain on the inside, but the symptoms were all there, to get me to the point that I could actually own up to it, own up my own stuff, and said, you know, this is going on. And getting to that other side, what you then realize is that, wow, my way of giving back and helping others is to hold their hands and give them support to get on to this other side. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to do that through a nonprofit organization, Oasis Focus Inc. And we basically cater to different things in major three areas, public school, families, and the marketplace. And the TV program is a summary of bringing all three together, and it's called Oasis Connection, in giving a hope, which is in Christ Jesus, to people and letting them know that, you know what, God loves you so, so much, and he's provided and made a way for you mm -hmm. so that you can journey through restoration and get to the other side. And when they get to the other side, there will be that conviction and that responsibility to go get somebody else. And it's our desire to continue that cycle of help and that cycle of um, bringing people to restoration that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that you just mentioned your nonprofit organization. So I want to talk about that for just a slight moment. So you said that you guys give back. I know that with your nonprofit organization, a little bit of the proceeds go to some type of, um, is it for education? I believe that's what we spoke about in our last interview. That's correct. We did speak about that in our last interview. Mm -hmm. I actually went into details to give you each one of the areas. What we do in education um, is twofold. And so one, two teachers and one, two students. For our students, the way we reach out to them is through our annual scholarship program called the Excellence in Character um, Scholarship Award, and it's for graduating seniors. Actually, this week, we got an application and a plea from a young lady in um, Greensboro, um, uh, and she is in a junior college, and I don't know how she came about our scholarship program, but it was a plea. And, you know, we had to let her know it's only for those in Texas right now. So that lets us know that there's more need out there, and who knows what God will do in mm -hmm. the next year or so. It might be extended nationally. But we do that to our graduating seniors in two counties in our major area here. Wow. So the Dallas County area and the Tarrant County area. We really would love to do more, and we know that there are many, many um, well-deserving, graduating seniors with excellent character and um, we ask them to write an essay and we are in the process of um, reviewing the ones for this year and we've gotten some excellent ones. We look for volunteer service outside of their school because it tells us something about who they are, their selflessness in wanting to give back that even though they might have gone through something or mm -hmm. they could be going through something, they've made the decision to still be a contributor in making somebody else's life 
better. And then we ask them to chronicle in their essays something they've overcome in their life. And most of the time, we know that those areas are defining moments in their life. So we do that. On the second part for our teachers, um, we've ha because a lot of our board members and advisory board members are educators, so we have a strong expertise that reaches out to educators in coaching and basically in Bible study. Um, through the years of meeting in Bible study, we've had that desire and we were just waiting for the right team to come on board mm -hmm. and we had the right team we started last year and we just published two weeks ago a bible study for educators across the nation oh, wow. and it's specifically for public school teachers now private school um, not that we don't have anything against private school we love them but we know for our public school teachers they need the support because a lot of times teachers in private school have huge support from the parent base and from the administration. A lot of our public school teachers don't have that. A lot of them do it as a mission, and a lot of them are underpaid, they're stressed, mm -hmm. there's just so many things stacked up against them. We wanted to give them support in the means of the Educator's Compass, which is a 15 minutes. Um, lunchtime Bible study that they do together with their colleagues, talking out those hard places in their life while using the Word of God that has already been laid out for them on a weekly basis and gathering community, fellowship, and strength through prayer and the Word of God. And we're really excited about that. So that's what we do in the in the realm of education. Of course. And, and with what you just said, you know, uh, having teachers take, you know, about 15 minutes out of their day just to, you know, not just talk about the Word of God, but to, you know, talk about the things that are going on in their life. I feel like that is actually very important to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, it's basically like a form of meditation if you think of it that way, because, you know, you're thinking about the things things that are going right in your life where you're thinking about the things that you know you want to change and by getting that out and speaking to other people about you know whatever is going on in your life of course that is going to definitely help and I know that you said that you also help students so what is the percentage of the nonprofit organization that you donate to students then um our student funds, I have to tell you, they're purely donations. And mm -hmm. those donations have come from our family personally, from board members, from friends, from donors. And it's a separate entity that goes to fund the scholarship 100% because mm -hmm. we're committed to that. And the money, basically, it's more like you give um, – people spending money. If you have nieces or nephews, you know, they come to visit you, mm -hmm. you give them spending money. Is our way of giving that um, well-deserving graduating senior spending money. The money does not go to their tuition or their broom and board. It goes to for themselves to buy essentials. Essentials that many times um, a lot of families that are struggling um, According to the economic ladder of the low income, according mm -hmm. to how the federal um, ladder steps that, they don't have that extra to have spending money. Right. The parents are just so excited that their child has gotten accepted into a college, whether that's a technical college, whether that's a vocational school, whether that's um, a community college or a four-year university. They're just glad that their young person has made the choice to direct their life in a positive way. And most of the time, everything they have is concentrated on giving them room and board. We wanted to take that extra load off of such deserving families and say, you know what, we see you and we are celebrating the fact of this huge milestone in your life. Here is spending money for you. Spend it to buy your essentials as you get prepared to go into college. Mm -hmm. So, and we're, we're glad to do so. If we had our way, we will give to every single applicant. Last year, I think we got close to 15 um, applications, and all of the applications, um, uh, Capriana, they mm -hmm. were all excellent. But wow. we just had to make that selection. Of so course. We're, we're hoping and um, trusting that we will be able to do more because we do have a lot of our young people, and that's one way to encourage them, that they are doing everything possible to follow that um, path that will bring them 
to the point of their destiny, that will bring them to the point that they acquire all the skills that they need and they're able to be contributing members of our society. We want to help them. Of course. I mean, children in whether it's a middle school or a high school, if they are excelling and they are doing well in school, I do believe that they should, you know, get something in return for it, you know, for for being a good student. And a, a lot of kids don't get an opportunity as sad as it is to go to college because of money in that aspect but when a kid does get accepted into a college it's more than just the tuition or the room and board I mean if they are coming from like a low income family it's not just the room and board that needs to be purchased but it's also you know them needing shampoo or or basic necessities while away at school as well well said Capriana and that's true shampoo um, essential socks Mm -hmm. underwear, I mean, just the essentials that they don't have to say, where are we going to get this? And they can actually set out to buy new sets for themselves as they celebrate this milestone and off to college. You said it very well. And, you know, we, we just spoke so much about your nonprofit organization. It's called Oasis Focus Incorporation. I want to take a step back with what we were speaking about in the beginning of our interview, because you being from Nigeria, I mean, we don't get someone on the phone every day that is from there. So if you could maybe just tell us what was it like growing up there? Well, thank you. Great question. Um, I, I believe God has a special design that he does, and mm-hmm. he does things for a specific reason. Having that opportunity to grow up with my grandparents, my paternal grandparents in Nigeria, um, at the time, I probably did not see the beauty of it because I was right there in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I remember days of waking up. We wake up very early, waking up to go to um, the well or the stream to fetch water. That's how we call it. You Mm -hmm. go fetch water. You have your big bucket that you take with you, and you go get the water, and you bring it, and you do this way at the crack of dawn. And because that water is what's going to be used before you go to school and also while you're going to school. And um, life there taught me the um, rigor of life and the responsibility of life as well. My grandparents did not exempt me, even though they um, showered and spoiled me a lot. They did not exempt me from the day-to-day task of what it entails to be in a family. And Mm -hmm. part of being in a family is contributing your part in helping with chores. So I remember those trips to the well very, very well. And um, because, you know, most of the time you walk barefooted, you're gone to the well, you draw your water, you put it on your head, and you're heading back home. You head back home, you help sweep, and, you know, when you say sweep, here, that's equivalent to vacuuming, right? <laughs> we have vacuums that do that here. In Nigeria, they ha- you basically sweep. They have a broom, and the broom, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen one of those brooms. Uh, they have almost like gathering um, twigs together and wrapping it together. That's what you use in sweeping. So mm-hmm. you have a portion that you sweep, and you do all those things before you go to school. And so when I was in elementary and middle school, I went to school from the house. And after I finished um, doing all my chores, my grandmother will say my breakfast was ready, I ate breakfast, and then she will walk me to the bus station every single morning. Um, In high school, I stayed in the boarding house, and that's typical growing up in Nigeria. So high school from grades 9 to 12 is normally a boarding uh, facility where you live on campus, and then you go home on specific holidays um, like summer time after school is out Mm -hmm. or during Christmas time or Easter time um, or any time in between. Or if someone is sick, you know, your parents come and get you. In my case, it was my grandparents that basically were there for me all the time. So um, the food is different. The culture is different. It's a highly communal um, culture. That means um, they believe in living in community together. And that's where I learned from my grandparents, um, um, their heart, especially my grandmother, for reaching out to the community. For Mm -hmm. example, when it's Christmas time or Easter time, it's typical. Each family will cook, and they will normally normally cook rice 
with, um, you know, stew, um, you know, that's basically how to interpret it in our own context mm -hmm. here. And then she will, after cooking the rice and stew with meat, um, she will now um, apportion uh, a portion for all the members within the community on our street, wow. the next street, the street behind. And so um, for those holidays, you make a lot of trips carrying everybody's um, portion that has been apportioned for them to go share with them. So it's a means of sharing um, life together. And so during those specific times, I always, I always thought I'm like, wow. So we just spread out and we just give everybody food. And you will not know that most of the time there's some families that even though it's a celebration time, that don't have something to eat. So having um, part of the community reaching out to them with food meant a lot. I saw that when I came back to the United States. I mm -hmm. saw that, especially part of our ministry, working with immigrant families, that, wow, many times a lot of the immigrants um, yeah, here, they don't have the support or connection, and they are by themselves. But to have some people that will reach out to them and say, you know, you matter, we're glad you're in our community, and we want to see you succeed. So I remember that um, so well that she did. So life um, in Nigeria, it's different because a lot of things that we have now, you know, we have technology, we have light. Um, sometimes the light, which is the electricity, uh, might not function maybe for a week or two weeks. In our case, we had what we called a generator. And a generator, basically, um, it's used for electricity in third world countries. So when the main electricity goes off or whatever, because um, electricity is not stable, is not consistent, mm -hmm. when it goes off, then we put on the generator. So if the light is gone for one week, the generator stays um, functioning, especially during the night hours um, for that one week. So I remember that very well. Um, uh, Climate-wise, the weather is divided basically into two main seasons. The raining season, where it rains a lot, and then um, the non-raining season, where it's hot. And so mm -hmm. those are the main um, two seasons. It's either one or the other. Um, so life growing up there, um, God used it to build a lot of things in me. Number one is work ethics, and because I saw it, I was um, part of that. It molded me to be who I am today. Of course. Of course, and it's definitely a humbling experience that you had, you know, growing up uh, growing up in Nigeria, I mean, it's completely, it's, it's, it's night and day, or like white, black, you know, it's, it's, it's literally, it's completely different on the opposite end of the spectrum uh, from growing up there to growing up in the United States. You know, we take things for granted, like electricity, like, uh, like water, uh, showers, everything that we take for granted on a daily basis. I mean, you in a sense, I mean, just to wake up and, and get ready for school, you had to go to a place with a bucket just to get water. So I, am I wrong when I'm saying that, you know, from going from Nigeria to coming, I believe you live in Texas right now, correct? Yes, we live in Texas. You are so right. It's um, so different. Mm -hmm. It's like opposite. And it's true. We do take a lot of things for granted here. Right. And um, in every opportunity that I get, a lot of my friends know that. I always tell them, if you get an opportunity, go visit a third world country. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know where to go, um, go to India, um, go to Africa, just pick a country. Mm -hmm. Go there for at least three weeks. It will change your orientation and perspective about life when you come back. Because you are right. We do take a lot of things for granted. We take running water for granted. Mm -hmm. We take light that we have for granted. In the age of technology, where in a home you could have maybe 10 pieces and devices of technology, we take that for granted. Um, we, we, we even take, you know, even the water that we drink, um, you know, not all the water... Um, uh, uh, of good quality. You can't mm -hmm. just say you've gotten water from the well and you want to drink it that way. You have to boil it and it has to be boiled to get rid of all the microbes in the water before it's suitable for drinking. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we do take for granted here. And um, I think that's why those that understand what it is owe it to our communities 
to let them know you really don't know what life is somewhere else. You really have a lot of opportunities right here um, at your footstep that you mm-hmm. need to take advantage of and get, get at it and then go back out there and help somebody else. Of course. I, I believe that in life, you know, living in the United States, I really do feel like people should travel somewhere else and experience everyday life somewhere else. Uh, I remember last year for my birthday, I actually traveled to Egypt by myself. I went there for about two weeks and it was the wow. most humbling experience after two weeks of staying there, coming home to the, to the United States, you know, realizing that we have things here that I do take for granted. And I never realized that until I was there. And, you know, there's there's good parts of Egypt. And then if you go to south of there, you know, people aren't wearing shoes. They have buckets on their head. They are waking up at the crack of dawn just to get food for their family. And that's something that is extremely eye-opening to see people working so hard day to day because that is the life that they live and the fact that you know we are here and we can just turn on running water or go into our refrigerator and and eat something it's it like I said before it is very humbling and I do like to say that I believe that everybody should at least once go somewhere that they are not familiar with and just experience life like you did in Nigeria well I so proud of you, Capriana. I love that you took that trip, um, Mm -hmm. that solo trip on your birthday. Um, I know it did revolutionize your life, Mm -hmm. and um, I think you're so right. Every American should do that once in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Just go there, not for vacation, you know, just go there maybe two or three weeks um, and live life among the people and see how they live life. You're so right. Mm -hmm. Um, We have it really, really easy here in the United States. And you know for us here in the United States, the leading nation in the world, we are so blessed with so many things, so Mm -hmm. many things. And yes, we do take them for granted. Of course, and I completely agree. You know, we are just about almost out of time. I wanted to talk about the person that you uh, have become today from all these humbling experiences that you had, but I know we have you on our show in probably a couple of weeks from now, so we can stop right here where we just left off, and then we can can continue again um, in two weeks from now, okay? Yes, um, thank you so much. I'm always delighted to be on. I... Um, I'm grateful to God for the work that KCU, Autumn, and the entire team are doing in making people's lives better, in giving them hope. Um, It's an honor for me to um, be part of um, your team and helping to do that through these um, interviews that we do. The person I am today, and I will say it all the time, all glory and honor be to God. The person I am today is the greatness and the goodness of the Lord and the, gra- and the grace of God, nothing short of that. Um, I look at my life and I see that it's God's hand that has directed me, that has kept me, and every single thing um, that I am, I owe it and give it back to God. Um, I've been privileged in different ways, and at this point of my life, my life is geared towards um, being a voice um, for God in reaching out with hope and helping people. And basically, that's the stage of life that I am. So I have been fortunate um, uh, education-wise. I've been fortunate um, family-wise. I've been fortunate in terms of profession. I have been fortunate in terms of ministry. God has blessed me, and my way of saying thank you is reaching back and helping others. Of course. You are a wife, mother, ordained minister, speaker, author of the book, Crushed to Restored. You also are the co-founder of a nonprofit organization, Oasis Focus Incorporation. I mean, you also host regularly a TV show. It's called Oasis Connection. It's a Christian TV show that you co-host with your husband. You know, you do so many incredible things, and that's why we have you on World's Most Amazing People, because you truly are one of the world's most amazing people. So I want to just leave off with uh, letting my listeners know a website that we would be able to find your book and a website that we would be able to find your nonprofit organization at. Well, thank you so much. Um, The book, Cross to Restored, Principles of Restoration from the Book of Nehemiah can be found on the website, www.crushed2, 
restore.org and they'll find all um, information that they need to on that site. For our nonprofit organization, Oasis Focus Inc., um, they can find us um, at www.oasisfocusaltogether.org. And on Oasis Focus site, they'll be able also to find out information, um, whether it's about the scholarship program, whether it's about our outreach for um, TV conferences. And by the way, we're going to Nigeria in November um, wow. to go strengthen and support our women leaders um, there for our first inaugural women's conference in November. So if there's anyone out there that is interested in going with us, we will love for them to come along and be part of our ministry team. Um, we basically will be gone for the entire week of Thanksgiving. That's where we'll all be spending Thanksgiving in Nigeria. So anyone out there interested um, in that adventure, um, let them be sure and contact us. So we'll many... Have so many incredible and exciting things coming your way. You guys heard her. So if you're interested in, in going there with her nonprofit organization in Nigeria, definitely take a look at the website. It's oasisfocus.org. And if you're also interested in purchasing her book, uh, it's at Crushed to restore.org that's crushed the number two restored uh, dot org and once again this is dr Faye obama hinti on the phone uh dr Faye, you have an incredible rest of your week now okay thank you so much capriana it's an honor to be with you and the team i love you and keep up the great work all right you take care now bye-bye bye-bye all right, guys. So we have some really awesome things coming up ahead at 2.30 and 3 p.m. So stay tuned here on WMAP Radio, where we bring you the world's most amazing people. Twice we can see it till the end. Put that spotlight on her face. Spotlight. Put that spotlight.